Hello, Jeremy and Simeon. This is Poppleton, book number two, Poppleton in Winter. Chapter one, icicles. Poppleton's house grew very long icicles in winter. I wonder if you ever got to see icicles when you were here. I don't know if you did. Poppleton was proud of them. He never knocked them down. He just let them get longer and longer. They get pokey. Gus, the mail carrier, said, Poppleton, you should do something about those icicles. Hudson down the street said, Poppleton, those icicles are not pretty. What kind of animal is Hudson? Looks like he has a tiny cup. And when Poppleton's mother visited, she said that an icicle was surely going to bonk him on the head. Bonk is a good word, isn't it? But Poppleton didn't listen to any of them. He loved his icicles. Each morning he took a ruler outside to see how much longer they had grown. Then one day, a little finch, that's a kind of a bird, a finch wasn't watching where he was going. He ran into an icicle and that one fell into the next one, which fell into the next one, which fell into the next one. I bet that was noisy. Soon all of Poppleton's icicles were lying on the ground. Poppleton was sad. The little finch felt so bad. I am very sorry, he said. That's all right, said Poppleton politely. Maybe we could build something with them, said the finch. Build something, asked Poppleton. Sure, said the, fin said the finch. The icicles are still frozen. We could make them into something. Poppleton and the finch worked all day long. And by evening, Poppleton had the most beautiful picket fence in town. Good thinking. Would you like to stay for dinner? Poppleton asked the finch, whose name was Patrick. Certainly, said Patrick. Poppleton was glad his icicles were knocked down. Icicles always melted, but a new friend would stay. The bust. The bust. That's a new word for you, maybe. A bust is a, like a sculpture of somebody's head. So you're going to see whose head he's building. Winter always made Poppleton creative. One winter, he built a pagoda out of ice cream sticks. Pagoda. Another winter, he hooked a rug. Another winter, he painted stars on his floor. Let's see. Now it was time to be creative again. What shall I make this winter? Poppleton thought. He looked out his window and saw Cherry Sue in her house. I know, said Poppleton. I'll make a bust of Cherry Sue. Poppleton went to the art store and bought some clay. Then he started molding Cherry Sue's head. There's the beginning of it. Hum, I can't remember what Cherry Sue's hair looks like, said Poppleton. He walked over to Cherry Sue's house and knocked on the door. Hello, Poppleton, said Cherry Sue. Hello, said Poppleton. Come in, said Cherry Sue. No, thanks. I just wanted to say hello, said Poppleton looking closely at her head. Just trying to remember what it looks like. He went back home and started molding. Hmm, said Poppleton. I can't remember what Cherry Sue's eyes look like. He walked over to Cherry Sue's and knocked on the door. Yes, said Cherry Sue. Poppleton looked deeply into Cherry Sue's eyes. Nice to see you. Goodbye, said Poppleton. He went back home and started modeling. Or molding. I guess 
molding when you press the clay into shapes. Oh, said Bobbleton, I can't remember what Cherry Sue's nose looks like. So he walked over to Cherry Sue's and knocked on the door. You again, said Cherry Sue. Poppleton stared at her nose. She tweaked his. Wink. Ow, said Poppleton. You tweaked my nose. Because you're making me crazy, said Cherry Sue. Bonk. I'm only trying to make a bust of your head, said Poppleton. Really, said Cherry Sue. I can't remember what you look like, Poppleton said, rubbing his nose. I'll get my coat, said Cherry Sue. She followed Poppleton back to his house. She sat very still while he molded. He took five hours. But when the bust was done, it looked just like Cherry Sue. Sorry I tweaked your nose, she told Poppleton. And she gave it a little kiss. And the third, the third story in this book is called The Sleigh Ride. It was a very snowy day and Poppleton felt like a sleigh ride. He called his friend Cherry Sue. Would you like to go for a sleigh ride, Poppleton asked. Sorry, Poppleton, I'm making cookies, said Cherry Sue. Poppleton called his friend Hudson. Would you like to go for a sleigh ride, Poppleton asked. Sorry, said Hudson, I'm making a cake. Poppleton called his friend Fillmore. Would you like to go for a sleigh ride, Poppleton asked. Sorry, said Fillmore. I'm stirring some chocolate fudge. What do you think? Poppleton was so disappointed. He couldn't find one friend for a sleigh ride. And besides that, they were all making a but such good things to eat. He sat in front of his window feeling very sorry for himself. <sighs> Suddenly, the doorbell rang. Ding dong! Surprise! <gasps> there stood all of Poppleton's friends with cookies and cake and fudge and presents. Happy birthday, Poppleton. He had forgotten his very own birthday. Everyone ate and laughed and played games with Poppleton. And then, just before midnight, they all took him on a sleigh ride. The moon was full and white. The stars twinkled. The owls hooted in the trees. Over the snow went the sleigh filled with Poppleton and all of his friends. Poppleton didn't even make a birthday wish. He had everything he wanted already. What are the things that he had? He had good friends. That's probably one of the most important things, isn't it? I'm going to show you a picture of Poppleton's town. There's his neighborhood. Remember in the last book we read it, he went to the library. I wonder where Poppleton's house is. Which one do you think is Poppleton's house? And which one do you think is Cherry Sue's house. I wonder if it's one of these right along here. Well, that's it for Poppleton this time. 
And until the next video, goodbye.